climate action is like a bus. You wait 30 years for it, and then three of them show up on the very same day. And yesterday was that day. If you ask me what the most difficult part of stopping climate change was, that'd probably give you a host of technical problems. You know, things like decarbonizing heavy industry and stopping emissions from agriculture. But then I'd also talk about the resistance to making these changes, and nowhere is that resistance felt more strongly than in fossil fuel companies, which makes sense seeing as these companies have a direct financial interest in the world not stopping climate change. And it's not obvious how you solve this problem. You can't just disappear these companies, but as long as they exist, they're going to be fighting to stop us fighting climate change, something that there's already a lot of evidence of them doing. And then, yesterday, something amazing happened. A Dutch court ordered Shell, you know, the oil company Shell, to cut its emissions by 45% by 2030, so like halving its emissions within the next decade. This would mean that an oil company, an oil company, would have more ambitious climate targets than many actual nations. This case was brought by Friends of the Earth on behalf of 17,000 plaintiffs, and the decision was made that Shell needs to cut its emissions in line with the Paris Agreement, which makes sense seeing as the world has agreed the Paris Agreement. But given that just a couple of months ago, Shell was dismissing this case as a noisy distraction, I think it's fair to say not many people, least of all Shell, saw this coming. Now this is groundbreaking for a couple of reasons. Firstly, it's the first case of a fossil fuel company being held responsible in this way, rather than, for example, it happening to a nation, and it could set a precedent for other polluters. But secondly, there were two other big shakeups of oil companies yesterday. The first of these took place at Exxon. You know, that Exxon. This saw two climate activist shareholders elected to the board, which could help push the company into caring about climate change a little more. And then we've got Chevron, whose shareholders just voted in favour of the company cutting emissions, and not just emissions from operations, but also of the products they sell, the products they sell being fossil fuels. Now, I would love to say that that's problem solved and fossil fuel companies are now playing ball in the fight against climate change. But of course, that's not the case. This is just one or perhaps three first steps against the problem. And it will take a lot of work to turn those steps into meaningful actions and cuts. Plus, this is just three oil companies. There are plenty of other oil companies who are still burying their heads in the sand, even as the tide comes in. An analysis by the organization Price of Oil showed that oil majors are doing this when it comes to climate action. And yes, red and orange means bad. But even if there's still a long way to go, Yesterday was a reminder that things that can seem impossible, like getting a fossil fuel company to fight climate change, can be achieved if enough people work towards it. This was a faster turnaround video than usual, but I wanted to make sure I marked the incredible events of yesterday. I've got a video coming out in the next week or two all about how we, including me, get climate change communication wrong. Make sure you're subscribed and you've hit the notification bell so you make sure not to miss it. Okay, until next time, bye.